was the jungle thing that would you say yeah. was that life changing for you that yeah really oh, life changing absolutely like the jungle was um pivotal for me in so many ways like people had real preconceived notions about Geordie Shaw and in particular me what I was like mm -hmm. um the limitations on my career what I'd probably be capable of yeah. and I sort of went into the jungle with the idea that I was going to show the real me and change people's minds yeah. and make me man proud that was always a big thing all right hello ladies and gentlemen today we are talking <laughs> shit with Miss Vicky Patterson. Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right, yeah. We're a bit rushed today, eh? Yeah, a little bit rushed. I've not long been back off holiday, and I know the idea is when you come back, you're meant to be like super relaxed and all the rest of it, but the way our holidays are, they're just a million miles an hour. I end up coming back needing a break. Where have you been? <laughs> we went to Santorini and Mykonos. Oh, nice. It was really lovely. It was my fella's birthday. He was Aye. 29 when we were away. Aye. So, no, it was nice. Um, but, you know, when you come back and you've got to kind of the wash and get the house sorted, get back to the dog it's just fun. oh I've got two kids with us when I'm doing that man imagine that imagine no, it, two kids I don't know how people with children do it like I really don't I mean it's don't. not really a holiday to be fair like no I can't imagine it no is. it's not really it's a totally different holiday we're going to make the most of the child free holidays before Sick. I do start and have my own because I don't on. think it'll be long I love it alright let's, uh, let's get down to business I want to ask you a question because I saw you post I saw you gone you're being a little bit quiet on socials and I saw yeah. your post how are you? Like, how are you? Do you know, I'm okay. I felt like I had to kind of address it because I'm obviously so active on social media. Normally mm -hmm. I have a podcast that I regularly promote. I have like various like deals with brands. I just love sharing my life with people as well. Yeah. Like even on a personal level, I don't yeah. think I know the line having been part of reality TV Do you know for what so I love? long. I love yeah. how you, you've got this new little accent now, haven't you? Do you think? You have, oh, I. Stop. You say it. Do you know what you say? Because yeah. I do this sometimes as well. Uh, if I'm on someone else's podcast, yeah. I say like, my, my, instead Rather of me, 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 I, or I, I instead of ah. Oh, really? So, some people, they have a bit of a... Oh. That's all right. Feel free, Han, get it right, mate. Good. Um, I do get a little bit recently now, especially when I've been on the telly, people being like, where's your accent gone? Your oh, really? accent's changed. <laughs> and it's not even intentional. It's yeah. just, I've been down here about 10 years now. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. Yeah, so probably seven, eight years, Aye. me fellas from down south. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was to keep going on all the shows and doing all the podcasts and speaking to all the people, like, and my accent was still as harsh as it Aye. was, I think subconsciously I just would find it really and difficult. Do you know what's mad? You know, everyone asks, what's your favorite podcast? And me and Ramsey, Chris Ramsey, did a podcast. Oh my God, I love Chris. And do you know what happened? Yeah. People were messaging, oh, Paul, the podcast sounded amazing. Yeah, yeah. But we couldn't no. understand what yeah. you said. Because we had a fucking howl. Yeah. But we were so strong that everyone was like, what are you even saying? And you do, like, when you're around someone who's, like, from the Northeast, like, you quickly slip back into being as broad and as fast and as fun but as mate, you... Mate, we had fucking hell. Leslie said to us, so we had Aaron Chalmers on recently. Oh, right? my gosh, yeah, I've I love Aaron. Aaron. I've known Aaron a long time. And when I hit record, yeah. you went full fucking Chava. No. Full Chava. I was like, no. mate! <laughs> Remember my buzzcocks? I used it on YouTube. Yeah. Him. You sound like my, fucking buzzcocks. My sister, my <laughs> the number one seller of Tacta Benz. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's still number sense. one seller of Tac. I love it. So Vicky, you, you mentioned that. moving down south. Yeah. What made you do that? So when I, it was when I left Geordie Shaw. Mm -hmm. uh, um. I was told by loads of people like, "There's just nothing for you outside of this show," mm -hmm. and. You know, it was really bad advice and mm -hmm. I don't think I was surrounded by the right people. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, I think a lot of people like to kind of make you, keep you small. It makes you more malleable. Oh, it, especially up there. Oh, yeah, I Aye. think, um, and even people in the industry, you know, if you don't have a very high self-worth, mm -hmm. you're more likely to do what they want you to do. Aye. You know, you're more impressionable, malleable. Aye. So I... Um, I was led to believe for ages that that was just the case and I stayed on the show and I stayed up I stayed up north mm -hmm. and then I got two really nice agents mm -hmm. who really believed in us mm -hmm. women funnily enough mm -hmm. um, I'm not a man hater but I do really <laughs> love women <laughs> yes. me too I'm with you <laughs> I've, got, I've got that in common I see women I mean one really I mean one <laughs> yeah just keep you out um, so yeah so they and they encouraged me to like proper spread me wings you know and right. there are there's just I want to really make hay while the sun shines. Yeah. I wanted to be a TV presenter. Like more recently, I want to be a documentary maker. I want to be an author. I wanted, there were so many things I wanted to be. And like it, the, the opportunities were just 
more it was easier easily yeah. accessible down yeah. in London yeah. um, so yeah so I made the move and then like not long after I got the jungle my life kept me down here even more yeah. and before I knew it like I just it became like it became really easy down here yeah. and really nice and don't yeah. get us wrong Newcastle will always be my home yeah. I'm literally well, as you know you're going there tonight, yeah heading up there and tonight. I'm coming down here and you're going up there it's mad <laughs> doing a bit of a swap I actually have to go back tomorrow as well do you I'm doing the um my friend's got a gig at the City Hall Friday night and I'm opening it. Honestly. Uh, which is mad. That train's no bother, though, is oh, it's it? Lush. I don't it's mind lush. the train at Compared all. Compared to going cross country? No. Fuck me. No, honestly, I don't mind it. Three and a half hours, shit Wi Fi, <laughs> so you can't get interrupted. You can watch your. Sh- you can watch your Netflix, download a oh, Netflix. And I that. always have like a little cheeky wine. Uh, I make sure I get a pret before I get on. No, I'm happy, happy I love bunny. It. A pret, I would only have many of them up there. <laughs> I prefer Christ. a Greg's. I really? absolutely prefer South a Shield, we've got two on one street. <laughs> Two uh, on one street. It kind of always goes mad. He's like, you can fucking tell we're back in Newcastle. There's no gre- there's no pret and loads of grapes. Ah, it's mad, I love right. it. Well, in South Shields, we've got them fucking seagulls, Nicky pasties and that. <laughs> they do like the seagulls. The oh, seagulls are it? obese in South Shields. They can't even fly. Stop it. And a massive. Oh. So, listen, my wife, so normally if I come on a podcast, I just shoot the shit right. Uh-huh. But my wife, she gets a bit nervous for things. Like, she's mean. She, uh-huh. she basically runs my business, right? Okay. And she always has me prepare for things. So I've got this big gig tomorrow with Stephen Bartlett, right? Sure. So I'm. I love Stephen Bartlett he's class, too. He? He's class. Re- really so nice guy. She, she, I'm okay on the stage. I could just go on and blag it. She's like, you have to rehearse. She had me doing some research for this, right? Mm-hmm. She was like, do some research about Vicky. Normally I never bother. <laughs> and I was like, fucking hell, Vicky, you've had some life, by the way. You've lived some fucking life, haven't you? Is that your way of seeing a rough you, No, around? no, no, you've just lived some life. I'm like, fucking hell, she did that as well. I've been busy. You have like, been I like busy. Bless you. I what, what originally made you go on Geordie Shaw? So, honestly, I was... Don't tell us you wanted to get paid for getting pissed. No, no, I mean... that. I mean, you did. I did, definitely. And that's not to say that isn't... Like, especially in your early 20s, I'm pretty sure Mint. that's, like, good enough reason, Mint. right? But, no, I um, had just... I'd graduated uni the year before, mm-hmm. um, and I'd gone to Liverpool, and, like, I was so full of these grand ideas. Like, uh, everybody goes off to uni, don't they? And they think, like... I mean, for the most part, I think we think this is going to be it and we're going to be really grown up and then we're going to fall into this amazing career. And Aye. actually, it, it wasn't the case for me. When I, the year I graduated, there was um, 300,000 graduates shit. graduated. And what did you graduate in? Drama, media and cultural studies. Oh, so not exactly what you'd consider vocational, you know. Aye. I wasn't like a teacher in training. I was I was very much like floundering. Yeah. Um, but there was only 30,000 graduate jobs. So it left so much of, so many of where at such a loss. And mm-hmm. I was like, I moved back up home because I was skint. Mm-hmm. I fell into, back into destructive habits, mm-hmm. going out, drinking mm-hmm. all the time, even going out with ex-boyfriends who I knew were fucking knobs, you know? <laughs> like I did all the worst things. Aye. And this, that's how I met like the producers from Geordie Shaw. Oh, okay. They would go out on a night out mm-hmm. And they would sort of like scout around for who looked like a bit of a character. Aye. And because so Charles was a topless butler, or something, wasn't he? Oh, I'm really not He was like a topless fucking. He was, was aye. He? he was like a topless <laughs> barman or something, aye. That doesn't surprise us. <laughs> I think a lot, of, like a lot of the people that they found were just you know big characters in aye, town. Aye. But I ran all the VIP rooms, so they would come to me and say like, "Oh, what's he like? Or what's she like?" And I'd be like, "Well, like he... top top and that." Exactly. Aye. Yeah, I didn't do top. My friend did top. Aye. I did um, tiger tiger, the white room. Fucking room. Hell, yeah. shit. That's going back, isn't that it? It is going back. Fucking hell. I always feel so old when I talk about this. <laughs> but yeah, that was. I did there. I did where I did um, Coos Day, Madame Coos. Aye, aye, aye. Shit. Oh, I did a couple, and I loved it. Aye. But yeah, that's how I got to know the the producers mm. from that. And honestly, Paul, it's just as simple as I had nothing else. And I wanted something else. Yeah. Like I wanted, I wanted to be excited and ambitious and driven like that girl who went away to uni thinking yeah, like a yeah, whole yeah, world yeah. was our obst- yeah, was yeah. our lobster. Is it oyster? Oyster. <laughs> but, I, but having lobster, Ramsey would love that. By the way, he would love that, wouldn't he? Eh? Yeah, I was having Vicky Patterson. The world's a lobster. <laughs> No, it's mad. I just had a lobster sandwich. Over did the you? Oh, you, didn't you get tell me, I fucking Mate, changed. You didn't get lobster sandwiches. <laughs> it was on a brioche roll as well. You're a big fanny. <laughs> You're a big southern fanny. <laughs> so no, I just wanted to do something that got me excited again and yeah, made yeah. me feel all of those amazing things I'd felt when I was like at uni yeah, and. Yeah. 
I was probably really naive and didn't think about the process much. And, you know, these people had seen me like drinking and shouting and like arguing in bars and stuff. And I probably should have thought, oh God, what version of me are they after yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just, yeah, in your early 20s, I super you naive. Get, you guys got a lot of shit when you first started that show, though, yeah. right? I remember Sophie, so, so I know Sophie as well. No, that Sophie girl. was on the sh- She was on the front page of the fucking Gazette for having a shit on the, she shit herself on like the first episode or something, innit? So she, and I can't even she, remember. I, I can remember all that media bullshit. Yeah. But actually, there wasn't any Instagram on that. It was that long ago. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, so it was. I remember them MTV sort of telling us to start with Twitter uh, and then a couple of years later telling them to start with Instagram but I still had a Blackberry so it oh, wasn't shit. even available for Instagram on oh this so I was God. I know I was real, really late to social yeah. media yeah. Um, probably subconsciously knew I had real potential to be obsessed with it like yeah, I am yeah, now yeah, yeah. but no like it, it was a it was a difficult process mm-hmm. um, we we you get a bit of training in that though, innit? You do. You get a little bit of media training. Yeah. Like, having been in the industry now sort of like 12, 13 years, like, I actually don't think it's adequate. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, some journalists, I think people are a lot nicer now, but it, it's... Oh, really? Yeah, I actually do believe there's far more focus on mental health, yeah. duty of care. Yeah. There have been far too many tragedies for people not to be more sensitive people yeah. are being held accountable you know so yeah. i do think they can still be pretty ruthless yeah. but predominantly i think things have gone in the right direction yeah yeah so when it comes to media training though it's kind of like are you told what to say no rather than, oh really so you are like you are basically is that if my memory serves is correct paul we like all got taken down to london which was always dead exciting they put in a holiday in <laughs> where did they put holiday in, in camden lock right. and we're always really excited the boys would always go out and the girls would always stay in right. wondering what they were doing um and we we basically had you remember 3am girls 3am girls from the paper who were like the show busy ones but a couple of them come in and just say like what do you do if someone says this and how do you respond to that and it was like being back at school for a little bit but it was only half a day you know and like some of the girls I mean some of the lasses were really young like I did think it was how old were you when you went on there? 22 22 22. 22. still young though isn't it? you know to be exposed to that level of yeah, but you know, I thought I was so grown up. Did you? I'd been, I'd been at uni. Aye. I'd, um, I'd Lived done, away from I'd home. done a season in Magaluf. Oh, Excuse shit, me, really? I was cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was terrible. So went behind the ears and so innocent and young, but thought I had it all fucking figured out. It's yeah, that yeah, dangerous yeah. combination, yeah. isn't it? And what was after? Like, what was after Jodie Shaw? Then was I a celebrity after that? So after Jodie Shaw, I. Um, oh, you did the X on the beach and that. Right? Oh yeah, so yeah, that was kind of uh, in con- like they were in conjunction. Was it? I was doing. And Jodie Shaw and X on the Beach at the same yeah. time. Um, and then I left Jodie Shaw and was given my own show called mm-hmm. Judge Jodie. Um, shit, I, yeah. shit, I remember that. Do you remember? Well, remember probably that. one of the only ones. I don't know who else fucking watched it. I remember it, shit. <laughs> I loved it and I thought it was a great show. Yeah. And um, it was so lovely to actually almost cut my teeth in a... a, a On your own? Yeah, a bit yeah. more of a presenting role. Yeah. Um, and then the jungle happened really yeah. soon. Was the jungle thing that, would you say, yeah. was that life-changing for you, that? Yeah. Really oh, life-changing? Absolutely. Like, the jungle was... Um, pivotal for me in so many ways like people had real preconceived notions about Geordie Shaw and in particular me what I was like mm-hmm. um the limitations on my career what I'd probably be capable of yeah. and I sort of went into the jungle with the idea that I was going to show the real me and change people's minds yeah. and make me man proud that was always a big thing my yeah. mine and me mom's relationship really really struggled when I was in Geordie Shaw did it yeah she just didn't recognize the person on TV. Yeah. And I completely understand that, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She brought up this like quite kind, very like bright, compassionate ch- like daughter. Yeah. And then to say, I just like fucking swear, Pissed on TV. swearing, throwing like co- drinks around and everything. It, it must have felt I love really the fact alien. that you said throwing because the old Vicky part of someone said hoying. 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 Do you know what? That's Hoying actually stuff sc- about. That actually scary because it didn't even come in my mind. Did it not? Hoying, no. The other one, it was going to be chucking. Chucking? Chucking. Wow. Ch- I mean, chucking's like the but next, that's level better. two, isn't it? That is it. I hope. Slightly better. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think, um, I think it was, I had loads of goals going in the jungle, but the, predominantly the main one was to just be myself. And um, eat a kangaroo's cock. Oh, yeah. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted all the bits in my mouth. I, I look at that, right? And I'm like, do you know what? I, that would, part would be fine with me, like eating all that. I've had far worse things in my mouth. <laughs> far worse things, yeah. 
fucking far worse things. Everyone's in my ex boyfriends. Um, no, I um, I didn't do an awful lot of the eating trials. To be fair, yeah, I'm trying to think. Fern really got the raw end of the deal with those ones. Aye. Paul, yeah, she. I think Live Spider was her really? like final trial. See, yeah, I'd eat that for. I'd, I'd eat that just to freak the kids out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, I want to be here. I guess I'll be here. I guess that to you, man. And then the kids, dad, and then the mates will come out. Dad, eat that. Go on. Go on. Eat that in front of him, dad. Go on. No, Go on. Honestly. honestly, two years ago, I had these false teeth, right? Uh-huh. And uh, the kids would love it when I took them out. Say, Dad, go and give it to him. Give you, give him your false teeth. And like, ah! it's metal. <laughs> so, what did you learn about yourself then um, in the jungle? So the jungle's an amazing experience, and if anyone ever gets the chance to do it, like I absolutely like can't recommend it enough um it's testing in Mm -hmm. a way that i didn't anticipate it being Mm -hmm. so you are without the certain like outside stimulus you know i'm one of these people who needs white noise so i need to have the tv on i need to have no there's a magazine or a book i need to know where my phone is i need to know that i will never be alone with the thoughts in my head for very long and um that's who I am. And I've worked on loads of different things over the years to try and calm me in a, like quite loud in our critic, mm-hmm. but like white noise is just the big help. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, it, you're just completely devoid of that. It's silence. You're alone with your own thoughts for the most time. And even though I struggled with it initially, like it forced us to face a load of demons, you know, yeah. and I cried in there loads. I made friends with people that I just, who openly said it was like, I think it was Susanna Constantine. She was like, you know, when you first came in here, it would have been my idea of a nightmare if my daughter was anything like you. Oh, shit. She says, that's what I thought you were. And she went, now nah, I'd be so proud if she grew up like you. Yeah. Oh, shit. It was so lovely. Making me emotional, stop that. No, honestly, I'm telling it. Like I could cry just thinking about my it. My daughter such... told me she had two crushes last night. Who? Oh, she's nine, me daughter. She said, I've got two crushes, Dad. I was like, You haven't? <laughs> she said, I like two boys, Dad. She... Oh, stop! I was like, stop it now, you little asshole. They grow up so fast. It's unbelievable. I can't she's she's on Instagram. She's been banned from TikTok twice. <laughs> oh, she's a gangster. <laughs> she's a straight gangster. <laughs> I feel like she's potentially my hero proper after hearing gangster, that. Aye, proper gangster, aye. And she doesn't give a fuck how famous people are. She'll go in and batter them, all right? Aye, she loves it, aye. We're at this thing. Actually, we're at this thing. So I saw that you also on SAS. I I'm was. a celebrity. So do you know Staz that was on there? I do know so Staz. Staz is a friend of mine. Is he? And Nina got it. We're in Lisbon the other week. I was uh-huh. at an event with him. Oh, it's lovely And in she Lisbon. was there. She battered him. Did oh, you? She battered him, aye. Oh, good but for her. He had no shoes on. She was like, what are you doing with no shoes on, man? <laughs> I don't care. So... Do you, know what I, do you know what I love about you, Vicky, right? I've watched you on some shows and you always try geet hard. Oh, I, I, I do like, like I was to thinking do about well. that. I was thinking about it. I was like, you've been on fucking hell. You've been on Master Chef. Yeah. You've been on all them shows. You've been yeah. on I'm a Celebrity. You, and then you're on SAS Who Days yeah. Wins. And every time I've watched you, you try geet hard. I feel, Have you always been like that? Yeah. yeah I think, it's not, is it competitive or is it just, I'm going to give it my best shot here? Oh, God. I, I don't know. I think it's probably a mixture of loads of stuff. So yeah. I, when you come from... I think, uh, like a reality TV background, in particular the show we did, Mm -hmm. and people have very little faith Mm -hmm. in what you're capable of. And even further than that, you know, just like absolutely have these like completely like terrible misconceptions of you. Like I, I think I've always thought I will prove people wrong in that sense. But even past that, you know, like I've always been a hard worker. Um, I've always been quite competitive, Mm -hmm. quite driven. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like to, I, I don't know, again, going back to me and our critic, like if I lie in bed at night and know I haven't done my best, I will not sleep, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's a, probably an amalgamation of all of those things. And I, I think a, a lot of high performing people will probably tell you the same things, you know, yeah. people not thinking they can do it, yeah. not wanting to let themselves down, yeah. coming from nothing. Yeah. All those things just drive you. I think actually, I often think about this with me. I think sometimes it's harder when you're from when you're from the northeast. Oh yeah, people down here often don't take it that seriously. I find that anyway. It's harder for me to get speaking gigs. Really, it's just oh, it's just it's just a bit of a weird thing. Well, you know, like I remember. Um, so but I you would... said you had a move here. That's, yeah, that's kind of what has to that would have to happen for me in some cases. I didn't even think about it, but yeah, like what you're saying is is really illuminating. I I remember years ago I, when I was at uni, 
Um, and I went to uni in Liverpool, still the north, you yeah. know. But I remember people telling me, like, when I sort of expressed desires to, it changed every week, but whether it was like a radio presenter or a TV, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. I remember them saying, well, you'll have to ditch the accent. It's mad, isn't it? And yeah, and obviously I haven't even done it intentionally, but it's softened. Uh, it's definitely softened. I did it in, in May, I did this speaking gig in fucking Puerto Rico, man. Imagine <laughs> that. I'm on the stage, right? Fucking thousand people in the room. How am I going to. How am I going to do this? And I had to talk. I just said, I've Did got this accent. Did you just go really slow? Really or? slow. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk really, really slow. Hey, babe, you can check the time to make sure you're not It's late, okay, we're okay. We're... I, got, I got an alarm set. So no, so we have um, about an hour. No, we don't, man. Your no, train's no, no. at half eight. That's it. Now I tell me train. All right, sick. So we've got like 10 minutes here. Yeah. Sick. All right, we're jumping in this thing with That's you. That's absolutely fine. To make sure you get there on time. Yeah, you're good. All right, so... um. The northeast thing. Let's dive into. Are you still cooking? Yeah. You're still cooking. I am still cooking. I literally made the fucking best pie last night. So it was um pie. Yeah, I'm like, proper jolly. I love a winter warmer. I'm is so happy was, the sun. Not... I'm so happy the summer's over. No, really. Yes, honestly, I've got like a fridge full of like I'm doing toad in the hole this week. Doing mince and dumplings. Oh, so that's you're still right into it then. Oh, so into it. So last night was chicken, leek, and mushroom pie. Shit. Mm, honestly. And my wife told us, I didn't know this, that you hadn't cooked at all before last show. So typical, like, um, obviously being at uni, I was like a student chef. So like all Super I'd, noodles and that. Exactly. Or like, oh, if I was going to make spaghetti bolognese, it would just be mince in a jar of dog meal. <laughs> like I had no idea about spices uh, or like flavours or textures or anything. Like I uh, was a real novice. Yeah. Um, But I, I talked to that like a, a duck to water. Aye. Uh, I loved it. Did it? Yeah, and I, it's it, the only time. Is I've that ever, your favourite? Is that your is second that your favorite show? Second favorite. So it's yeah. like the jungle, then that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But you know, it's because it really. So it's all about what I, you get out of it, isn't it? Yeah, what you these learn. experiences. Yeah. yeah, what you learn about yourself, what you sort of get out of it for your career. Like, uh, I'm not being vapid, that's a huge part. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the jungle changed my life. I wouldn't be where I am now without it. Yeah. But MasterChef, I went and did just after a horrible breakup. Mm hmm. And like I had no confidence. Didn't something else happen? Did someone die I lost, or something? I lost my grandma, yeah. yeah. So within the space of six months, I lost my best friend. Fucking hell. My fiance cheated on us. Fucking hell. And the lads I was doing Dubai. All in 2020? Um, yeah. And then Fuck I lost my grandma. Fuck me, Mush. Yeah. I know. Honestly, it was That's a So it was a lot. And we had all that lockdown shit happening. Yeah. Oh no, it's just before. Just before. Just before, babe, yeah. Fucking hell. So it was it was tough. And I remember going. How did you get through all that? Um I threw myself into work a lot. I get a lot of therapy. Yeah. I have a great life coach. Yeah. Um, and I truly believe that. Like, I'm a huge advocate for exercise. Yeah. So, and, you know, I'm still, I'm still fine. I still think I'm processing a lot of it. Yeah. But, you know, going on, mas like, MasterChef, right? I had no self-worth. I'd been cheated on. I felt like I was 31. And I know it's nothing, but, you know, like, 31 single again. I was so terrified. Aye. And I thought... Well, all your mates settling down that oh, as well. Oh, God, I'm, I'm from, like, Newcastle. Babe, everyone was married with three kids. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, I was like, Some oh, of them be no. fucking grandparents at 31. Yeah, honestly, all, all my friends, they thought I was gay. I'm like, it's fucking all right. Um, so, yeah, so I was really just lost. And I just thought, hey, what, like, what's going to happen to me now? Like, you know, I, yeah. and I threw myself into MasterChef. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, Greg and John were so nice to us. And, like, they'll openly say, like, they said it to me, like, we watched you grow throughout yeah. that show. And when you found your confidence in the kitchen, it was like you found your confidence in yourself again. Yeah. And I did. So I'd like, I'd, I think... Was it the perfect timing for yeah. you then? Yeah. So good. Just to make us believe in myself yeah. again. Yeah. Because I really felt crap. Yeah. 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 I love it. Mm. Talk to me about um, exercise then because that's that whole weight and body thing's been some fucking journey for you as well, hasn't it? Do you know, honestly, it really has. And like, I'd love to sit here and see I've got it all figured out and stuff, but I think it's an evolving discipline. Me, you look a million dollars, by the way. Do you think? And you're eating fucking pies. Oh, Do you know I, what I mean? love a good pie. It's, that's Man. unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> so sorry, it's been... A... <laughs> it's all about balance and it's taken us like 35 years nearly to work that out. Yeah. Like, I tried like living to excess because, yeah. you know, fuck it, you're only young ones yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it absolutely brought us no peace. Yeah. Like, I was just a wreck, you know, mentally and physically. Gained mm. weight, felt lethargic, mm. that raging in our critical louder and than ever. And then you've got all these fuckers taking photos of, of you. Of course, and that. you know. Yeah. And we didn't, 
especially when Jodie Shaw first started, like we didn't look like all the other girls that were very perfect and polished. We were just really normal. So uh, we were easy targets in that sense. And yeah. I think that's really weak sauce, but yeah. that's a whole nother, whole nother conversation. Um, and then of course I did my fitness DVD and I tried a completely opposite approach, which is just like complete stoic sacrifice. Oh, really? <laughs> um, it, it, it brought me no, it similarly brought me no peace, you know? Yeah. I loved being thin and yeah. strong more yeah. than anything I liked being strong yeah. capable you know yeah. but um, fucking counting how many blueberries I put on my porridge in the morning oh, no, it was just no. never me and only drinking like vodka and fresh lime and, oh because like, there's no calories in it because the calories Aye. like it was awful it made me miserable when I was drinking it like I just nailed them to get that bit of effect it was yeah, awful yeah. Yeah. so no so I, it took us a long time to work out if neither extreme brought me happiness the peace had to lie in between yeah in between and now I and that'll train. be hard to find for someone and I'm the same a bit usually busy. I'll be all in or all out very I'm all in or I'm all out I, yeah. I'm either all or nothing that's what I would say yes I oh, know but then I think it's loads of people f- are like that uh, me too I. Loads it's of- like a bit of an addictive personality you know? absolutely and yeah. again you'll find that a lot in high performers but I also think it's just easier if you tell yourself I'm not fucking drinking this week it's so much easier I drank this year me by the way congratulations well hello Hello? <laughs> <laughs> so Fucking hell. All of it on. Um, but you say it's so much easier in my head to wrap my head around, like, right, no saturated yes. fat, yes. no carbs, yes. no alcohol than it is just one. Yeah. For some reason, just one, I think I have a, a, a it never, never sat very well with me, you yeah. know? Yeah. I know. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you want. It, like, a, um, like a, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I can't. Oh, I can't do that. I could never do that. I could never do just one. And yeah. it's been in every aspect of my life, whether it be like the the food, the alcohol, anything. Yeah. So I've strived really hard over the last four, four, three, four yeah. years. Was there something that triggered that, or but being really unhappy? Really, just being really unhappy. Like when I broke up with my ex, mm-hmm. when I lost my best friend. Mm-hmm. I am, I just... And all of this, Vic, right, is is happening for you publicly as well. Yeah. Does that make it harder? Got to. Uh, so, because I've been in the public eye since I was 22, it's all I've ever known. Mm. Um, should we pick that thing up? I'm getting it. What does it do you want? Hello? 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 Be that, Somebody's buzzing the door. Be that driver. Be that driver. So you've been in the public eye since you were 22? Yeah. So because all I've ever known as an adult yeah. is what I still know now, I struggle to differentiate. I struggle to work out what's normal yes. and what's not. Yes. And actually, a lot of the time, don't get us wrong, fucking feeling like having to go on this morning, the day after, mm. the son broke the story mm. about my ex doing what he did. Mm-hmm. Did you already know about that? You didn't... I got a call off the sun, right. which is very courteous. So they them. told you? Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. They, oh, he would never have. <laughs> oh, my Shit, God. man. No, they told me, and it was it, it was more like, does Vicky have a comment? Yeah. You know? Not like, how is she? No, like, listen, we're telling you this because it's going to be the front page tomorrow. It was, you know, does she have a comment about Fuck this? Me. And of course I didn't. But yeah, right, obviously having to go on this morning, the day after, not ideal. But then, on the other hand, feeling like you've got hundreds of thousands of women who fuck not only understand but empathize who get fuck it me, yeah. who are drawing strength from your strength like mm. that makes me carry on it makes me put That's one foot in front cool. of the other yeah. isn't it yeah well because you could also look at it the other way i've got all these because everyone yeah. talks about hate isn't that don't they yeah that would be one of the questions that i'd ask you about dealing with that but i love that you see the other side of it yeah Oh, honestly, you get, I know like social media gets such a bad reputation and don't get us wrong, I've had my fair share of shite. Yeah. And I still do. Yeah. Um, you're never going to, people please your way into collective acceptance. You're yeah. just not. Yeah. Um, but I will say that I find far more positives from it these days. Really? Yeah. And do you think, it, are you looking for them more? Yeah, I think yeah. when you pump more positivity, love, light, everything into your life, it's just law of attraction. You get more back. Yeah. And don't get us wrong, every so often I still get one twat who's like, you are the one who is shagging on Jodie Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, all I think is my growth intimidates you, you, t- you little tit. I love that. You know? So yeah. I just take a deep breath, move on, block them, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I am striving to be like far less reactive on social media mm-hmm. because I think these people they don't deserve 
sort of the attention that they so desperately crave. But yes. it is difficult because yeah. deep down, I probably am just still a little bit of that girl from Geordie Shore. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you know what? It's, it's weird. Sometimes you get 100 amazing comments or something, and then you'll get one bad one, and yeah. you're like, Fuck me, people hate me. But that's the one you focus in on. It's it human weird, nature. It? It's, it's kind mad. of like a form of self harm, isn't aye, it? It is, I. Do you listen to that Baz Luhrmann thing? But no. Um, wear sunscreen. No. Listen to it, you'll love it. And it's his like, it's to music and it's like his take on loads of different things. It's just him basically like offering advice, you right. know? Um, and there's this one that says, um, throw away your bills, but keep your love letters. Because, you know, you can get like a million positive comments, but yes. you will stick to that one bad one. You could have hundreds of love letters from your life, but it, for some reason you'll remember that bill that caught you off guard. Like, Yeah. Hey, it's half past. That's okay. my alarm. Okay. Right. <laughs> Should we wrap up? Or? Vicky Patterson, thank you so much. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This was, was a whirlwind. <laughs> we'll finish you off in the car. Please do. It's been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Amazing.